wife and my wife and my wife. Oh, listen, just one more thing. Uh, my wife. Oh, there's one little thing. Uh, my wife, my wife, my wife. You know, you know, when I'm listening to the game, my wife. Your wife. However, my wife. And my wife. My wife. And my wife. Uh, when my wife needs just a little thing. My wife. Oh, my wife. For my wife. Oh, my wife. Oh, one other thing. My wife's. You know, my wife. I have a further question. Oh. Of Mrs. Columbo, but that's it. Never ever meet her. To my knowledge, uh, her name is not mentioned at all in the show. I might have missed something. Let me know if I have. Um, I've seen most all of them, except for the latest ones so far. I'm getting there though. The only way I think I know what it is is because I saw this amazing clip of Peter Falk roasting Frank Sinatra as Columbo. Check this out. Wait, 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 no, put, no, sir, if you don't mind, would you put uh, two Lieutenant Colombo Franks in that? That's all. That, that, that's good. That's good enough. You don't have to write out Lieutenant. L.T. Perry, that's fine. I put L.T. all right. <laughs> Did you put for the missus? <laughs> two Lieutenant Colombo and Mrs. Colombo. And, and Mrs. Colombo. Frank Sinatra. Good luck. You sure that's all you want? That'd be good. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Can I say love? 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 Can I say love? Yeah. yeah. All right. Could you put the missus first? <laughs> the missus. Colombo. Colombo. And the lieutenant. Okay. Right. Wait. Wait. Even better. Just put two rows. <laughs> His mysterious personal life is part of his charm. We never see his wife, we never see all the other relatives he mentions in great detail and goes on and on and on about them. In 1979, a new show aired called Mrs. Columbo. It started 22-year-old Kate Mulgrew as Kate Columbo, wife of Frank Columbo. Now in 1979, Peter Falk was 52 years old. I was 22 when I finished uh, my little stint on Ryan's Hope, right? And the head of programming for NBC flew into New York, Fred Silverman, and he said, would you please have lunch with me at 30 Rock? And I did. And he said, we have designed a spinoff for you based on the wife of Columbo. I said, as I adjusted my braces and flipped my pigtails forward, Columbo, Peter Falk. The guy is 70 years old. This is sick. <laughs> no, we believe at NBC, Ms. Mulgrew, that you have great natural gravitas. Oh, I said, can't you see my braces? <laughs> and we would like to offer you this series. So at first I said no, because I had been offered Desdemona on Broadway. And I said, I will consider it if you allow me to do my little Shakespearean run. And then they made me an offer I felt at 22 that I could not refuse. So I went out, but it didn't have a leg to stand on. <clears throat> if they'd done it just Kate Loves a Mystery, it probably would have worked. But Mrs. Columbo, how could you possibly do that? First of all, Peter Falk was so singularly great. And the beauty of Columbo was his isolated self, right? That we never saw her. The wonderful secret of it. And then there she is. She's 10 years old, she's got a big dog, she's in a funny raincoat, oi, you know? Here's the opening of the show. The people who made Mrs. Columbo wanted to make sure that Columbo fans watched, so they had all the set pieces that were mainstays in the Columbo series to make a connection. The dog, the cigar, the car, I even think in this show the vet might be the same vet as Columbo's. I'm not sure, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, it also shows her cleaning up the house and doing laundry and going off to work at the weekly advertiser. It's a penny saver type paper. It feels like the show is trying to appeal to the housewives of 1979. She has a daughter named Jenny, husband who works a lot, you never see him, 
She wants to be taken seriously as a member of the press. This is how she ends up solving mysteries. She wants to be more than a small town writer, so she inserts herself into murder cases. This episode is about Robert Culp, the actor on the left. Um, there are a lot of Columbo villains that show up in this show as other characters who are bad. The guy on the right is Martin. He's our other bad guy. He is a real creeper. Robert Culp plays a lawyer, and apparently uh, Martin was in trouble. He was arrested for doing something, and Robert got him off. And now Martin owes Robert a favor. Don't worry, Charles. Trust me. And all of these Robert Culp Martin um, secret meeting scenes ends with like a shot on Martin for way too long. And it's really creepy and I love it. Check it out. So Kate meets this woman while taking private French lessons because that's what people do. Um, she is Robert Culp's wife. Guess what happens to her? Uh, the French teacher was Odo in Deep Space Nine, so I guess they would both go on to work on a Star Trek show. The main prop in this episode to push the story along is this new intercom system um, that's being installed in Kate's house. And we find out later that other houses have the same thing and people can overhear conversations and talk to each other with them. Joanne. And just in Welcome case bedroom, you weren't sure Joanne how County. it all worked, Charlie, the telephone man already? is very, very case? informative. Hey, uh, oh, what's his name? Mr. Telephone, come here for a minute. That goofy judge postponed the arraignment again. I didn't feel like going back to the office. Oh, good for you. I was just <clears> going to take a bath. Take your time, Joe. It's a brand new unit. I just plugged <sighs> it in. Who's Charlie? Who's Joanne? Is it supposed to do that? Well, what it sounds like, Mrs. Colombo, is that somewhere in the neighborhood there's another intercom just like this one. When the cord is plugged into the power and the machine is turned on and you press this key, your voice goes through to your daughter's bedroom. Through the power wiring in the house, what they call a carrier system. Where is this other house? Anywhere. See, you got the same power lines, the same intercom, so you get their voices along with your lights and all that. Of course, if you don't want to listen, you can just... This scene also sets up the idea that Kate's intercom is picking up Robert Culp's intercom. He hates his wife. To be fair, she's a bit clingy and secure. Um, and he is not a very convincing liar. Charlie! Hello, babe. You always look so sad. Do I? I'm sorry, honey. What for? Oh, that I'm not slim and sexy and beautiful for you. You are beautiful. I'm just a little tired, that's all. Not like I was. Oh, I just love you so much. I know you don't love me anymore. I just want you to like me, Charlie. We're going to be fine. You worry too much. Me my whole life, honey. My beautiful lawyer husband. Sometimes, when you're so quiet, I'm afraid you're thinking about how maybe you'd like a divorce. I've never thought of a divorce. Never. Oh, I'd rather be dead than without you. So Robert Culp has another secret meeting with Martin and set up the murder of his wife. And after a long pause... Tonight. Tonight. 
Later that night, Kate is typing a story and spying on her neighbors through the intercom when she hears something weird. This Martin. leads to a creepy She's Martin coming. murder. No. But not before yeah, Martin no. hears Jenny on the intercom and he is very Just concerned. Don't worry, Charles. There'll be time. You won't hurt her. Martin. Trust me. Now leave the house. Martin convinces the wife to grab a hairdryer while she's in the bathtub. You guess what happens next. Now I want you to take off all your clothes. No, it's not that. Believe me, I'm not even going to touch you. I promise. But you must do what I say. Trust me, Joanne. You've been hiding from me. One of my students died last night. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Ms. Houston, you know her? I don't think so. Later, Mr. Kate finds out, out about the murder during your French nice lesson lady. because Robert Colt's wife took lessons in the same place. And she starts to put two and two together. I think we spoke the other day. Her husband's name is Charles. Yeah, Charles Houston. Says he's a lawyer. Poor guy found her in the tub. She's overdue at a party. He came back with a friend. How'd you like to come home to something like that, huh? Charlie and Joanne. She tries to convince a police detective about what she Caruso. thinks has happened, uh, is but he does not believe her. Now, yeah, I, I bet you're I'm thinking, right. Why not call your husband? I mean, that's his job, right? But we find out that this is happening at the exact same time as the Columbo in London episode. So he's very far away. The police detective tells Robert Culp that Kate thinks he killed his wife. And the misogyny level goes up to 11 uh, as he's belittled for a few minutes. It's uncomfortable. I'll try to confine my ambition to reviewing the PTA show. But now I have an appointment with my dog's doctor, which is probably just as well, because I've embarrassed myself enough for one day, haven't I? Well, Robert Colt meets with about? Martin again. I love Martin. He's the most uh, interesting I'm character on the show situation. already. You couldn't even deal with your own wife, Charles. Mrs. Colombo knows my name. I don't want anyone else hurt. She knows you bought those intercoms, I don't too. want any more police. She knows what Martin did. The police don't believe her. What else does she know? Nothing. Nothing. She doesn't even believe herself now. So Martin kills Robert so, Culp. Kate keeps investigating, finds out more information, yada, yada, yada. He goes after Kate. Later, Kate wakes up to check on Jenny. She's scared, but her husband is away on another show and is not available. Really, the rest of season one of this show is not as heavy as this. Um, season two, Kate off-screen divorces Lieutenant Columbo and gets back her maiden name, Callahan. And then the show changes its name from Kate Columbo and Kate Loves a Mystery, and then it gets serious. She goes undercover as a prostitute, she goes to jail, avoids car bombs, and is threatened by the mob. It's crazy. So Kate goes to Robert Culp's house to find her daughter, because that's where the intercom was. And she finds Martin the Creeper. 
So they fight for a while. Kind of like a long time. We find out that Martin's plan was to kill Mrs. Columbo in the house, the daughter away, and no one would suspect him. But we also find out that Mrs. Columbo has turned all the gas on in the house. Early in the show, we learn that Robert Culp's doorbell is kind of broken. So every time you press the button, the sparks come out of it like it just messed up. Now that Martin's in the kitchen full of gas, if she can reach their doorbell and get the sparks flying, it'll ignite the gas and it will kill Martin. Yeah, so Kate murders Martin, and everything's fine now. It really wasn't much of a mystery. I mean, she did some investigating and show you, but she kind of knew what happened anyways. This reminds me of a horror movie ending. Um, this was a weird episode for season one. Um, if the next scene confuses you, you should know that there was a lightly mentioned talent show that Kate and Jenny were getting ready for. Um, it goes right to it. From this creepy hallway, zoom in with fire and it's super serious. It goes right to the silly dance number. Um, at some point, Jenny even points out into the crowd and says, Look, Dad's here. They didn't actually show it, but like they say that he's there. They finally made it. Um, so that was the first episode of Mrs. Columbo. My favorite one has a creepy marionette and this guy who thinks that it's alive and doesn't want to work with him and there's a murder obviously. It's really amazing. Um, but I hope you like this review of Mrs. Columbo. Um, leave some comments, good or bad, whatever. Alright, well thank you for watching.